All right, someone asked a question about 4.89. So we want to start by reviewing stuff from Chapter 4. So this question says, indicate which of the following species will be smaller. So the word species just refers to just a general term referring to an atom or an ion or a substance or a compound, just something, some chemical thing. So if we look at A, Cl versus Cl minus. So when we're looking at size, whether we're comparing two individual atoms to one another or an ion to an atom or two ions, whether those two atoms have the same are atoms of the same element or whether they're atoms of a different element, regardless of what the element is or where they are in the periodic table. We're dealing with size. There are two factors we need to consider. And the first factor is our priority. And that factor is shielding. So we said elements that have similar degrees of shielding their size will be determined by which has more protons. But if there's a significant difference in shielding between two elements, then the one with more shielding will have a larger size. Right? So shielding is the negative repulsion between electrons. And we said when we're looking at atoms to see if they have similar shielding or significantly different shielding, the main thing we look at is how many core electrons there are the two elements or ions or atoms have the same number of core electrons, then they should have similar amounts of shielding. So we're focusing on the core electrons. So we could say more core electrons, oops, significantly more shielding. So if we're dealing with atoms, we just find them on the periodic table and look at their electron configuration. Or we could look at kind of a shortcut way to do that is to look at which horizontal row they are in starting at the top. All right, so chlorine is here in the one, two, three, third row down. So that means chlorine's outer electrons are the n equals three or third energy level. And we could verify that for chlorine if we wanted to recognize it as 17 electrons and just show the electron configuration for all 17. So there's 10, 12, 17. Right, so that's the electron configuration for a neutral chlorine. So how many core electrons are there? 10, right? The core electrons are all the energy levels inside the outermost energy levels that has electrons in it. So there are 10 core electrons and seven valence electrons. So the size of the atom is going to be determined by how far out those valence electrons are, how far out their 90% probability barrier is from the nucleus. And that's going to be mostly determined by how many core electrons there are in there, repelling those electrons and preventing them from getting close to the nucleus. Did I see a hand go up? No, okay. So <clears throat> for chlorine neutral, there are 10 core electrons. Now, if we have a Cl minus, that means we have to put an extra electron in, right? If it's showing a negative charge, it has an extra negatively charged particle. We're, and again, we're not changing what's going on in the nucleus because that's usually held together by the strong force. And we're not going to talk about examples with, where we have an unstable nucleus and the strong force isn't strong enough to hold that together until much, much later in general chemistry. So we're not worrying about that right now. So if we see a charge, it's because the number of electrons has been altered because the attraction between the electrons in the nucleus is much weaker than the attraction that holds the nucleus together. So if we have an extra negative charge, that would be a situation where we have an extra electron. So instead of seven valence electrons, now we'd have a total of eight. 
two electrons in the 3s and two and six in the 3p. But still, we still have the same number of core electrons. So a Cl and a Cl minus should have similar amounts of shielding. So if we were then to look at the next factor, which is the number of protons, at this point, obviously, if they're the same element, by definition, they have the same number of protons. So in this case, generally we would say with more protons, the atom will be smaller. Right? The putting in more protons, you might think in your mind, well, if there's more of something, it should take up more space. But you have to remember that the protons are in the nucleus, and the nucleus is super, super tiny, almost like a point in space compared to how big the electron cloud ar is around that nucleus. So it's the distance from the nucleus to the electron cloud that determines the size. And since the nucleus itself is so super tiny in comparison, it's really how far out the outer electrons are on average, or that barrier to their 90% probability that really determines the size. So we could have a huge nucleus or a tiny nucleus. It's not going to affect the size, except in that the more positive charge we have in the nucleus, the more of an attraction that will create for the negatively charged electrons in that cloud. So the cloud, you think of the cloud as like a fluid almost, so something that can flow around. The cloud is not, an atom is not like a rigid sphere, right? It's not like a ping pong ball. It's like a positive, tiny, tiny amount of positive charge surrounded by this fluid of electrons that can move around. So the fluid can expand and it can contract. And if you have more positive charge in the nucleus, it pulls the fluid in closer. <coughs> so we have a smaller atom with more positive charge. In this example, though, the two chlorine atoms obviously have the same amount of positive charge. By definition, if it's Cl minus, that means it has 17 protons. So in this case, we would predict that they should be similar in size. What the only difference then, since they have the exact same number of protons, we have to go back to factor one. So if they have the same number of protons and similar shielding, they'll be similar in size, but we can de determine a difference if they're not exactly the same in shielding. So we could say more total electrons, more shielding. Even though these two atoms have similar shielding because they have the same number of core electrons, just putting one extra electron into the Cl minus, if that's the only difference between the two atoms, it has to be making the difference in their size. And there will be a small difference in size because the extra negative charge in the Cl minus creates some extra repulsion. So that atom will be larger. So we could say the Cl will be smaller and the Cl minus will be larger. Any questions about that? Okay, let's look at um, it's kind of the opposite example where we have an Na or an Na plus. So we're going to look at the same factors here. So we're going to look at shielding first. And the way to do that is make, to make sure you have a full understanding of where the electrons are. So for Na, which would normally have 11 total electrons, we could show the electron configuration. Oops. So that's 10. So normally a neutral sodium would have one electron in the 3s. So that means it has 10 core electrons and one valence electron. If we have an Na plus, though, that loses an electron. Having a plus charge means you have one fewer electrons than you would normally have because you don't have enough negative to keep all the charges equal and balanced out. So if we show that, now we lost the third energy level. So now the second energy level becomes the valence level and the first energy level becomes the core. So now there's a very large difference in shielding. We could say Na has much more 
shielding than Na plus because the Na has 10 core electrons shielding one valence electron and the Na plus only has two core electrons shielding the valence electron. So the the it's we wouldn't want to say that the Na plus has more positive charge because technically that's not true. They both have the 11 protons in their nucleus. There's the same amount of positive charge pulling the electrons in. It's just that when I take one of the electrons out, since it was the only valence electron in there, now a whole nother level becomes my new valence level. And so those now, we're not looking at the distance from the nucleus to the 3s, which is experiencing all that shielding from the inside, pushing it away. Now, in the Na+, we're looking at the distance from the nucleus to the 2p, which is primarily shielded by only the 1s electrons right next to the nucleus. So that's going to be pulled closer to those 11 protons uh, when I have much less shielding than it would be if I, if I had all that shielding still present. So for here, definitely the Na plus is going to be smaller due to that uh, re reduction, sig very significant reduction in shield. Just look at a couple more here. Let's look at uh, C, O2 versus S2. O2 minus versus S2 minus. So the O2 minus, normally oxygen would have eight electrons, but if we give it a two extra negative charge, we're putting in two extra electrons, so that's 10. So it's just a 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And the sulfur goes from 16. If we add two more electrons, it goes to 18. So. So there's 18. So again, here we can use shielding to establish the difference. So even though they do have different numbers of protons, which will be a factor, that's a secondary factor. So we look at the shielding first. We can say clearly the core electrons in the oxygen shielding the valence, that's not much. So even putting two extra electrons in the oxygen, it will make it larger than a neutral oxygen because it will create a little bit extra shielding. But the majority of the shielding comes from the core, so we're not really changing the core when we put new electrons in, unless we put so many electrons in that we go to a whole new energy level. Right? The two electrons we put in went into the 2p. They're not going into a new level. There are already electrons in the second level. We put more in the second level, it's not going to make a big difference. Uh, same thing here, except here we just have more core electrons. And now we have 10 core electrons shielding the valence electrons and pushing them away a lot more. So clearly the oxygen 2 minus will be much smaller than the sulfur 2 minus. And then maybe we'll just look at one more example here. It's just one more point to make. If we were to compare the size of magnesium 2 plus versus an aluminum 2 plus, first we would look at the shielding. And to do that, we'd have to analyze where the electrons are, which one has more core electrons, so magnesium normally has 12 total electrons, but if we take two out, it's going to be down to 10. And if we look at aluminum, which would normally have 13, but we're taking three out, that's also going to be down to 10. So if we can recognize that the magnesium 2 plus and the aluminum 3 plus have the same total number of electrons, which is 10, we don't need to write the electron configuration and figure out which are core and which are valence. If they have the same number of electrons, they'll have the same electron configuration which means they'll have the same amount of shielding, same number of core electrons, same number of valence electrons. So we can say those two will have the same degree of shielding. So that's not going to be able to distinguish between them. 
So the only way to distinguish between them is by looking at the number of protons. And since the magnesium has 12 protons, but the aluminum has 13 protons, then we can say the aluminum 3 plus will be smaller than the magnesium 2 plus because the extra proton will pull the all the electrons, that fluid cloud of electrons will be pulled closer. 